Okay, so we're going to have a quick look and talk through the patches. The first one is my clean patch, the Fender 67 Reverb. And you can see that I'm employing three patch elements. I've got my spring reverb, a tape delay, echo, and then finally a graphic equalizer. If I turn off the patch elements, what we're listening to right now is just the 67 reverb, the cabinet emulation, and the microphone emulation. And you can see it's a little bit too bass heavy. So that's why I employed the graphic equalizer on this. If I give it a, uh, just a holding it down for a second, you can see all of the different elements that come on with the graphic equalizer. Same thing if I turn on my spring reverb, if I just hold that down for a second, you can see I've got mix, decay and tone. And then finally, turning on my tape delay, you can see I've got two screens. I've got the delay, sync, feedback, mix, record level, uh, the tape head, the wow and the flutter type element of a tape delay. And if we just go back out of that, this is the sound of all three elements engaged. And so I use the delay and the reverb to add a little bit of top end to it because without them, even just with the graphic equalizer, you can still see that the bass response is a little bit too overpowering. Now, if we turn on the edit section of the amp again, and we just scroll over to the amp, you can see that I'm using the Black Duo amp, and then now if we go to the cabinet emulation, I'm actually modeling a 4x10 black uh, cabinet, so four 10-inch speakers, and then I'm using the Dynamic 57, which is a Shure SM57 microphone emulation, and that's what makes up my A1 patch. Jumping into patch number two, this is the Marshall Blues Breaker patch, which should hopefully pair quite nicely with my 1962 Marshall Blues Breaker. On this patch, I'm using two design elements, which is the stereo reverb, which is a high quality reverb, different from the spring reverb on the first patch, and then a parametric equalizer this time, which I was using to kind of dial in the amp a little bit better. If we go into the edit mode, you can see that I'm using a Vox AC30 Tuba 12 AC Blue, which uh, that is the patch name for the AC30, and the blue references the Celestian Blue speakers. The microphone emulation is a Royer ribbon microphone, an R121, and this uh, particular patch is quite bitey. So if I leave the design elements on. <laughs> If I turn off the reverb and the uh, parametric equalizer, it's not too bad, but it just didn't seem to work too well on single note. And it sort of had this honky sort of a sound. So putting on the parametric. Holding down the parametric, you can see there's a whole lot of bands going from the low frequency, low mid, the high mid, and then the high frequency. So I've been tweaking the parametric quite considerably. Turning on the stereo reverb, you can hear just a little bit of breakup. So that is that particular patch for my broken or clipped type of a sound, which I was, I was thinking of the some of the old Queen records and um, you know, a bit more of that British type of a flavor with that particular patch. Moving along to the Marshall JCM 800 patch, which uh, it's one of the classic rock type of sounds. It's not necessarily a metal type of a tone, but it's a pretty, pretty heavy, chunky sort of guitar signal. The uh, elements that I'm employing in this particular patch are again a stereo reverb, just a little dash of it, and then here I'm using an Ibanez Tube Screamer modulation um, 
uh, which is a dirt or an overdrive pedal and I'm doing one of the classic configuration setups which is that before the amp, the amp has got its own tone stack and its gain employed and it's quite distorted but then if you run another dirt pedal in front of an amp that's already overdriven you're kind of double stacking the tone stack and I'll give you a listen to what it sounds like uh, just the patch on its own, this is the 800 sound bit of reverb to give it a little bit of life but then now when I employ the tube screamer in front you can see it's not quite as woofy or hulky sounding you can get a more harmonics and more more of distorted rich content Turn off the pedal You can see it's not, just a little bit too beefy Then if we edit the patch you can see that I'm using Very very common rock type of a setting which is a 4 by 12 classic 30 and uh, most modern rock Music has been recorded with uh, something along the lines of like a Mesa Boogie 4x12, so that's 4 12-inch speakers. The Classic 30 references the Vintage 30 Celestian speakers that are driving that type of a setup. Then on this particular one, I'm using the uh, Condenser 414 microphone. And if we just take this opportunity to show you some of the different microphone emulations, you can see it really does make a pretty big difference to the sound. So if I start off with my Shure uh, SM7B type of a uh, microphone, this is what it sounds like. Can of fly spray, completely useless. So now we'll go to the Shure SM57. Still too bitey, not enough bass response, which in fairness a Marshall is known as a pretty bitey amp anyway. Going on to the Dynamic 409. A little bit too low mid orientated for me. Going on to a Sennheiser uh, uh, SD 421. Not bad, but I find it just a little too urgent for my taste. Going on to the Neumann 67 now. Not a bad patch. Then going on to the famous Neumann U87. Uh, this is one of the most recorded high-end microphones in the world. Then going to the one that I've chosen for this particular setup, which is the Condenser 414. Got a lot of low mid and low information on there, and then finally the Royer R121. Just not my particular cup of tea. And that gives you an idea of the JCM 800 patch. And we'll take a look now at the Mesa Boogie Mark V. This is the heaviest patch running with my Blues Breaker. Couple of design elements again. I've got a graphic EQ and I'm using the Tube Screamer pedal again to push that front end and give it a little bit more clarity because the Mesa Boogies I find are just a little bit woofy, but um, this is what it sounds like, just the patch on its own. <laughs> So it's a pretty saturated, very, very heavily overdriven patch. If I turn off the patch elements now, this is the sound on its own. You 
can hear it, there's a lot of sort of sub bass going on with it. So that's why I turn on the graphic EQ. You'll hear it shift a little bit. Still a bit going on. So now that I'm pushing the tube screamer on the front end, if you have a look at it, you can see the tone is up there. I'm applying just a little bit of drive, but it's just enough to give it that bit of a, a fresh punch to the sound. So it just corrects the uh, the bass information going on in that patch. Then if we take a look at the setting that I'm using for microphone and cabinets, again the typical 4x12 classic 30 vintage Celestian speakers, and I'm using the condenser 414 emulation again, and it just dials in pretty nicely. So that is the uh, patch 4, the Mesa Boogie Mark V. Finally, we're just going to have a look at the B3 patch, which is the Soldano SLO 100, which is a famous late 80s, 90s uh, high gain boutique amplifier made by Mike Soldano. And this one, I'm just using two design elements again. I've got my stereo reverb, and this time I've got a BBD delay, which stands for a bucket brigade delay which is a famous type of a, a pot that they used in the old analog delay pedals and so it gives it a different tail or a runoff to the sound. So if I take off those patch elements, this is just the Soldano, which has some other interesting elements going on in terms of the microphone and the cabinet, but we'll talk about that in a second. So this is the patch without any uh, effects employed. <laughs> What you'll probably notice straight away is that it's very muddy and it lacks total clarity. And that is a deliberate move on my part because I find that when I'm doing soloing, you really want the mid the mid frequencies to be engaged so that the soloing stands out a little bit more clearly as opposed to the crunch and punch of say the JCM 800 or the Mesa Boogie Mark V. So if I put on my stereo reverb still kind of honky and a little bit nasally now I put on the Bucket Brigade delay, and if you have a listen to the trail of the delay, you'll notice it doesn't have that digital delay type of a sound where it's pristine and it's very clear. This one kind of trails off with an echo, almost sounds like someone sort of muffling their voice a little bit, and this is what this sounds like. <laughs> So, when I'm doing a little bit of playing of the patch... So it makes for a nice, clear singing patch. Now, if we have a look at the uh, microphone and the cabinets, this is where it differs from your typical type of a scenario in that usually the Soldano um, heads uh, in in their particular amp configuration, they'd normally match that with a 4x12 cabinet. You can see here that again I'm using the Vox AC30 Blue Celestian model which is much more of that sort of bitey British type of a sound and then this time I'm employing the Royer uh, Ribbon R121 microphone patch. So it, it just gives it a little bit of a distinctive sound differently from what you would typically expect with a Soldano which would be it would sound a little bit more like a Mesa Boogie than the, than the type of sound that we're using right now. And that gives you a bit of an idea of what I'm using on these five patches. Hope you enjoyed it.